Good evening. I call this meeting to order. Today is Monday, July 16th, 2018. We're here for the purpose of the regular meeting of the Elmhurst City Council. It is uh, 7.37. I ask that you all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge of allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk Spencer, I ask you to call the roll. Moliner. Here. Brennan. Here. Sabatino. Here. Goiter. Here. Dunn. Absent. Leader. Here. Polumsky. Here. Bram. Here. Pluto. Absent. York. Here. Levin. Here. Park. Here. Conquest. Here. Kennedy. Here. Twelve present, two absent. Our 12 present, two absent, we have a quorum. 12 present. Are we missing somebody? Besides, oh, Alderman oh, Toledo. Two. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah, no, you're right. I just had my count wrong. Uh, okay, before we get started, um, just want to take just a moment. You may have noticed the bunting outside or the bunting behind me here. I want to take just a moment to remember former Mayor uh, Chuck Weigel passed away on July 6th. Um, Chuck was an alderman of the Fifth Ward uh, and on the City Council from 1957 to 1961. He was elected mayor three times, uh, starting in 1961, re-elected in 65 and 69. While he was mayor, he served as president of DuPage Mayors and Managers and vice president and director of the Illinois Municipal League, among many things. Uh, he was also on the executive committee of the IML. Mr. Weigel was also awarded an honorary doctor of laws from Elmhurst College in 1965 and the JC's Distinguished Service Award in 1972. Mayor Weigel, I think, was 94 when he passed. Um, I did have an opportunity to meet him. He actually befriended uh, my neighbor over the last couple of years, so I had more than a few occasions to meet Mr. Weigel. Uh, he was full of life uh, and just uh, I was a better man for meeting him. And I'd ask uh, that you all join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his family, and we thank him for his years of service. Uh, right now, I'm going to ask uh, Anthony Cazone to meet me. So let me say a couple of nice things about you first. Please. We got some people here, I see. Very happy to uh, be part of uh, the promotion of one of our folks. Um, Anthony Cazone uh, has um, served for the last 11 years in the Elmhurst Police Department. One year as detective in the Investigations Division. In addition, he's also held several specialty assignments, including evidence technician, field training officer, dare instructor, juvenile officer, breath operator, traffic unit member. He's an active member of the EPD crisis negotiation team, certified in crisis intervention training, and receipt of seven unit citations for performance of duty, to say the least. And we're here to promote Mr. Cazone, so I'm gonna ask you to meet me up here and uh, bring your family, who we have here. My, okay. Bring them up here, we'll introduce everybody. You stand right here. Besides the family in back, they always show them. Come on. Other one know who we have here? Just my, Marie, my, my mother, Marie, my father, Tony Cazone, and my fiance, Kristen. Fiance? <laughs> Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I am an infidel. I am an infidel. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the laws of ordinances and the laws and ordinances of the City of Elmhurst. And the laws and ordinances of the City of Elmhurst. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office of police sergeant, of the office of police sergeant, according to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations.
He's already got one. All right. <laughs> Scooch in here, Chief, and I make a book at <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. Thank you. For your service, too. Appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Sergeant. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And in a gold badge. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you. Congratulations, watch your step. Thank you. <laughs> proud for you and proud for your dad, too. Okay, uh, that was agenda item three. On to agenda item four. Receipt of written communication from the public. From the public, at this time, is there anybody who has any written communications they wish to submit? Please raise your hand if you have any written communication you wish to submit. Seeing none, we will move on to public forum, agenda item five. This is an opportunity for anybody in the audience to address the council on any item they so choose. Um, once you've been identified, we ask that you make your way over to the microphone on my right, your left, right next to Chief Ruth there. Um, we ask out of respect for the work that needs to get done here this evening and out of respect for others that may want to speak, that you keep your comments to three minutes. Uh, we are recording this, so we ask that you state your name. Your address is optional. Clerk Spencer, at this time, do we have anybody who signed up for public forum? At this time, Mayor, no one signed up for okay no one signed up we had a sign-in sheet in the back um is there anybody in the audience who did not have an opportunity to use our sign-in sheet but wishes to address the council at this time if so please raise your hand i see one person anyone else i see two okay we'll start with ms gatesman and then we'll go to mr pagash Julie Gateson, 886 Parkside. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody on the dais uh, for the Southwest Elmhurst Stormwater Mitigation Project, also known as Brian. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody for all their hard work, especially the Public Works Department, uh, the department and the committee um, for working so hard to get this project going. We had so many roadblocks I didn't think it would ever happen. Um, and I kind of went from hopeful to I'll believe it when I see it, but I can see it now. And um, I've never been so happy to see uh, road construction before. So <laughs> I just wanted to thank everybody. I really appreciate all your hard work and uh, we're excited and um, looking forward to maybe not having to be up all night when it rains. Um, so on behalf of myself and all my neighbors, we thank you. Mr. Pragash. Claude Pragash, 566 West Gladys. We seem to got this town into a little mess over a plastic building. There's a code for it. Building department didn't know about it, but do now. 18 months of it. In the last meeting, it's going to extend on further. It's, after, it's as if this council believes that as soon as they nod their head, you can have one, everybody in this, every resident in this town is going to run out and put up a plastic building. Development planning made a mistake. 
should have called an agricultural specialist from Siberia. They like to eat vegetables up there. Maybe they got frozen vegetables that they can grow. But how often have I sat in this council, and it wasn't but a couple, maybe two, three meetings ago, there was a desire for somebody to have property altered around St. Charles and York, had pictures. This is what we're going to do. Well, it doesn't really follow the code, but that's okay. Really doesn't do this, and well, it doesn't do that, but it doesn't meet the code, it doesn't do it this way, it doesn't do it that way, but you know, we gotta go along with it. We think it's a grand idea. Well, wait a second. Yeah, the traffic on one of the side streets is gonna get all fouled up. Well, that's okay, you know what I mean? There isn't enough parking, they can go down a block and a half and go to another church and borrow parking from them. They got a parking garage. That's six stories tall because four wasn't good enough. Zoning was for four, but no, we need, we need six. Then I wound up paying for it. It's not what the code is in written, it's what this council interprets it. Interprets it. People along Old Lake Street know that for a fact. They read it, they had their lawyers, what did the council do to them? Well, it doesn't really say that. It doesn't really mean that because we say what it means and how it's going to work. Why? Is it in the, written in another English? But when a builder comes in, there isn't a thing you can't do for him. You even change a building code from copper water lines. One meeting, up, oh, well, we gotta change them. State says we can do it, we do it, but we fought against it, but we're going to have plastic water lines. Mr. Pog, I should ask you to wrap up your comments. I certainly will. Mayor, do you have any idea what public health and, and welfare was, how much was spent on it last year? How much was spent on culture? I imagine the aldermen do because they voted for it, right? You can ask them all. Treasurer's report tells you exactly how much you spent on public health. A little over $500,000 and over a million four on culture. Okay, anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move on to public forum. On to announcements. Any announcements from the dais? Alderman York. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. So a week from this coming Friday, um, Friday, July 27th is the sixth annual um, Superior Ambulance Elmhurst Cycling Classic. Um, all the final arrangements are being made um, and we're looking forward to the day. Um, racing begins at 11 o'clock. We still could use uh, volunteers to help make sure that we um, do the race safely and in good order. Um, we're excited uh, for the day. The weather looks a little cooler than last year, but we're a few days away so it could snow or it could be really hot, who knows. Um, but um, I encourage everybody to come out and see the races and, and enjoy um, the activity. Um, our website is elmbike.com, um, also the elmhurstcyclingclassic.com, uh, and I look forward to seeing my fellow aldermen out there as volunteers. Thank you. Any other announcements? Seeing none, on to the consent agenda. At this time, is there any item on the consent agenda any alderman wishes to? Have removed to vote no or provide additional comment. Alderman Polomsky. Item 7.8. 7.8. Anything else? <coughs> Seeing none, I will now entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda minus item 7.8. Motion by Alderman Brennan, second by Alderman York. Clerk Spencer. Molinar. Aye. Brennan. Aye. Sabatino. Aye. Twitter. Aye. Dunn. Absent. Leader. Aye. Polemski. Aye. Graham. Aye. Toledo. Absent. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. Park. Aye. Honquist. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. 12 ayes, 0 nays, 2 absent. 12 ayes, 0 nays, motion carries. Consent agenda minus item 7.8 is approved. 
On to item 7.8. Clerk Spencer, this is a report out of Public Affairs and Safety, and I ask you to read the recommendation. It is therefore on the advice of the Public <coughs> Affairs and Safety Committee to recommend to the City Council to abro approve the expenditure of $30,000 from line item 110-0094-454-6098 to fund civic activities for the Elmhurst American Legion THB post 187 and to require that the future grant request from the Legion be processed through the community grant program. Signed by Scott M. Levin, Chairman, Bob Dunn, unsigned, Danny Polumsky, Vice Chairman. Okay, to put this before council, I'll ask for a motion to approve the report and recommendation as read. Motion by Alderman Levin, second by Alderman Leader. Alderman Levin. Thank you. Um, we spent quite a bit of time on this uh, being a request from the Legion for funding. Uh, as the council will recall, and it's <clears throat> outlined somewhat in the report, I'm not going to highlight all of the line items of expenditures that are listed there, but more of the history. Um, the grant to the Legion started about, this would be the third year. It started in the first year after a bid was made for video gaming and it was not approved by the council. Uh, I believe Alderman Leader, Alderman Moliner, maybe Alderman Healy uh, advanced a separate grant request to assist the Legion to, uh, as it was pre presented at that time in my mind, to upgrade to get it in a position where it could get to a more financially viable point. Um, <clears throat> it came up again last year, and uh, the second year, I should say, and the grant was approved, and the funding amounts are in the report. Um, I believe it was 49,000, uh, almost 50,000 the first year, and then uh, second year was 30,000. Uh, when it came to the budget session that we had, it was introduced into the budget, and it was put in for $30,000. Um, I give you this background because I think there was some confusion amongst some of the aldermen in terms of where we were going. Some of the aldermen said, well, does that mean we're going to approve it? Uh, and no, it was just a placeholder in case it was approved. But I do believe that the Legion was lined up to believe that this was money that would be available to them to support their ongoing efforts. We spent a lot of time talking about this. I think there are some issues that we were concerned about in terms of what the long-term goal is. I know that uh, I had spoken out last year saying that I assumed it was the last year of funding and I have signed the report uh, supporting another year of funding. Um, but in my personal opinion and the reason I supported this report, it's because it completes that cycle of what we are trying to do to get the Legion uh, back in a good financial situation. Um, I've also, it's also been added to the report that the, the two aldermen that signed it, which were Alderman Dunn and I, uh, was that, but next year it would be a, a program that should be evaluated in conjunction with other community grant programs where municipal dollars are involved to look at the same kinds of factors that we look at in terms of how served, how many people brought into town and, and more that way. So it's a little bit of an unusual report, uh, but we have, the, the, at least Alderman Dunn and I have recommended that we go with the full $30,000 for this year. Okay, any comments? Alderman Polomsky. Thank you, Mayor. The members of the American Legion, our community's veterans, are our heroes. They have served and sacrificed for us and the greater good out of a sense of duty and love of country. Because of their values, dedication, and service, we are able to sit here safely today in a public meeting in the greatest country on earth. But before us tonight, you will find in board docs a referral from Alderman Leader and Mulliner asking for a grant to support the American Legion, noting that the Legion is focused on serving 
veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. And additionally, there is a request from the American Legion, THB 187, for $32,700 to fund a number of initiatives, including $18,500 for, $18, for military ball. The representatives who have come to our committee and who are actively engaged with the city are role models and a pleasure to talk to. If the city could allocate grants based on appreciation for an organization, I'd give the Legion anything they ask for. But just as we don't abandon the bidding process if a vendor is a veteran-owned company, we can't bypass the community grant process for a grant requ request for the American Legion. We can't ignore standards when granting city dollars. The community grant application process not only establishes eligibility criteria, but it allows for comparison to other grantees and ensures applicants have plans, timelines, and targets. I want to say that the Legion representatives have been nothing but cooperative, and it's not their fault that their request has taken an extraordinary path or that they did not have the opportunity to engage with the grant committee to address the portions of their application that were without responses or those in need of clarification. I'm not going to address every line item or every point, but I will address a couple of factors that shaped my opinion to not support this report as it stands. First of all, community grants come out of hotel motel tax revenue as required by council approved policy for the purpose of promoting visitors and tourism. I understand that this is coming from a different budget line, so for the sake of argument, uh, let's eliminate that threshold that it would need to support visitors and tourism. I'm just going to exclude that criterion. Um, but we still need to examine how a Legion grant would compare to the others. Grants are allocated for the purpose of providing a public benefit, but they also directly benefit the people who participate in the grant funded activities. There is a calculation that the grant committee considers when making a decision to award a grant or not, and if so, how much. For example, the city contributed a grant to the Elmhurst College Jazz Series. When divided out among people attending, it comes out to $1.14 per person. The Elmhurst JC's Carnival Grant comes out to $1 per person attending. And the, cycle, the Cycling Classic Grant comes out to $1.25 per person. Perhaps the most relevant is the Elmhurst Memorial Day Parade, which the city has been fully funding, funding on an ongoing basis. The unanimous support of this grant by the Grant Committee, the Public Affairs and Safety Committee, and the Council not only reflects the city's solid and ongoing commitment to honoring veterans, it also serves as a relevant comparison. The $20,000 grant, when divided among its participants, comes out to $2 per person. The military ball on our agenda tonight would come out to $132 per person. We cannot justify that. Additionally, other grant recipients follow up with the grant committee to provide outcomes from previous grant spending. There was no <coughs> opportunity for the grant committee to review how the $80,000 already granted from the city was allocated and how that helped them meet their goals. The information they have provided has not indicated that they have reached those goals. I also find it difficult to draw the distinction between how this grant funds the non-for-profit side and doesn't fu fund the for biz for-profit business corporation, which is the restaurant in Normandy Banquets. And I have tried to find other ways in which we could support the Legion. For example, possibly funding um, a consultant to help them with strategic planning and reaching their goals and uh, coming up with a plan to, to do that, or even a way in which that we could honor our veterans with an honorarium for the events that they host and the ceremonies that they lead. But upon further reading of our uh, Veterans Commission charge, that is something that is technically overseen by our existing city Veterans Commission, and that's a, a volunteer commission. Um, some may support this because they say it's the last year. Keep in mind, though, that two years ago, we heard phrases like it's a shot in the arm to help them get on their feet, and it's a one-time grant. Then last year, it was it's the last year. And the items before us again for the third time so I continue to believe that facilitating ongoing services and activities to honor veterans is within the realm of what the city should be doing. I support our Veterans Memorial Commission, which includes members of the Legion and the Legion Auxiliary, and our annual plans to fund the Memorial Day Parade. I do not believe awarding a grant to the extent described in the report is warranted. I believe $10,000 would more than cover all of the Legion's existing non-for-profit activities, 
excluding the military ball. Um, the, all the activities honoring veterans and educating our community and additionally cover some of the new ideas. That said, I would like to make a motion to reflect those, the changes to say that instead of $32,000, it's 10,000 and to exclude the specific activities. So that said, I would like to make a motion to amend the report. So Alderman, Plums Alderman Plumsky has submitted a written version. You wanna make a motion to actually substitute, not amend. So a motion to substitute what I'll call the minority report. I don't have them. Oh, can she do substitute? Can I understand what you're saying? She didn't submit a minority amending. report for this. Yes, amendment. You want to call this a report or an amendment? Because it's awesome. Um, I think you can call it an amendment. Um, amendment. Okay, uh, that's fine. Just, start. just some logistics. Uh, a minority report is something that would have been submitted ahead of time. Um, so, I, I stand corrected. So Alderman uh, Polomsky. Is, uh, has made a motion to amend 30. the current report. I think, did you hand this out to everybody? I did. Okay. Um, Again, it, what it does is it, it excludes the specific activities and it just says um, instead it reduces of the 32,000, yeah, it reduces the amount and it just specifies that the, it is um, events okay to fund civic activities honoring veterans and educating the community okay i think council's pretty clear on what the motion to amend is any questions for the chair before i ask for a second okay i have a motion to amend the current report do i have a second alderman bram uh continued continued discussion we have a motion to amend on the floor before us any additional conversation Alderman Leader. Um, I think it's obvious that, <clears throat> excuse me. I think it's obvious that I'm going to speak against this and I'm going to speak for the committee's recommendation of 30,000. Um, I wanna thank the majority of the committee for a perfect explanation of why they support providing the $30,000. Um, I can't do any better than their explanation and I won't try. I will speak on another contribution of the Legion that I don't believe is fully understood by the public or the council. The ultimate mission of the Legion is to salvage lives broken in service to their country. The Legion is no ordinary organization and I will do my best to explain why and why you should take the greatest pride in supporting 30,000 for them tonight. Uh, Mayor Morley, um, please excuse me and indulge me if I become personal and emotional in the process. Um, I hope age like beauty has some privileges. Napoleon once said, I know he's a good general, but is he lucky? I was certainly not a general, but I was lucky. And I'm proud of my two years of active duty with the Army Medical Corps and my four years additional service in the Army Medical Corps Reserve. My first bit of luck was to come of military age and fulfill my service between the years of two great catastrophes, the Korean War and the Vietnam War. 
I never heard a shot fired in anger. But paradoxically, I saw many dead, seriously injured young soldiers and dependents at the 11th Field Hospital in Germany. Many I cannot forget. It is a shocking fact that there are more active duty deaths in some years of peacetime than there are in some years of wartime. Some 4,700 members of the US military died in a two year period in the early 80s, a period when the United States had only limited troop deployments to conflicts in the Middle East. That number of deaths is 900 more than the 3,800 deaths during 2005 and 2006 when the United States was fully committed to large-scale military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. This is not to say that it is more dangerous to serve in peace than war. Of course not. But anyone who serves in the military in peace or war is quite literally putting their life at risk. Once upon a time in Elmhurst, a boy, one of our own, grew to young manhood, a second ward boy, New York high school boy. He was killed in battle in Iraq. 10 years to the day of his death, his closest wartime buddy, suffering from PTSD, committed suicide in a room filled with pictures and mementos of his beloved friend. Millions of American veterans are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. They are inhabitants of the Republic of Suffering. All of the old young men. But that is not accurate. Female veterans commit suicide at a rate 300% of their counterparts in civilian life. Their fate written in a ferocious chapter of the Book of Life. Every day of every month of every year, some 20 veterans commit suicide, over 7,000 a year. They weren't lucky like me, and I might add, like all of you, all of you. You or I will never be pursued by dagger teeth and the lightning thrust of a lifted, bloody, razor-sharp claw in a place full of eyes, unblinking, forever watching. You or I will never know the feeling that you can't go to sleep without the fear that something awful is moving towards you. Not for us, the world of shadows and nightmares. I understand <clears throat> some may feel concern that the Elmhurst American Legion is not yet financially sustainable without our help. But the fact is that virtually all of the other 14 organizations we so generously and compassionately fund are not sustainable without our help. 
That is why we help them. If you deny the Legion, then it is logical to deny all of those other fine organizations seeking help. Be careful if you go down the path of financial sustainability. And I say this with no suggestion of criticism of anyone. But you can end up with, I can't give you money because you are not sustainable, and I won't give you money because you are sustainable and don't need it. To the extent we do not fund the Legion, crucial life savings programs will be curtailed. The Elmhurst American Legion operates a 24-7 lifeline to all federal veterans, administration, hospitals in the area, as well as Rush Medical Road Home Center for Veterans. Further, even as I speak tonight, the Legion is entering into an understanding with Elmhurst Hospital and Heinz VA Hospital to provide additional life-saving service for our Elmhurst veterans. This life-saving hotline has dramatically reduced the time between paperwork examination and treatment from months to days and sometimes in emergency situations to hours. The highest possible priority for the Elmhurst American Legion, in fact, its very reason for existing is aid and comfort to veterans suffering from military-related illness, disability, PTSD, and the effects of Agent Orange. The job is not over because the suffering is not over. The Elmer's American Legion does not leave its wounded on the battlefield, and neither should the people of Elmhurst. The grant amounts to $2 per year per single family home a small price to offer a helping hand to a lot of suffering veterans that gave us the best years of their lives. The years of the Second World War were the great cathedral space of my childhood. My grandmother, like millions of others, had a small silk flag displaying two blue stars on a white background framed in red in her front window. That meant she had two members of her family, two sons, and the armed forces. One day, Early in 1943, we were walking together in the neighborhood, and I small, saw a small flag with a gold star in a window. Ma, I asked, why do they have a gold star? and we only have blue stars. My grandmother stared silently at the gold star for a very long time, no doubt thinking of her two naval officers' sons sailing in harm's way in the war-torn Pacific. Finally, she answered, the gold star means their children have gone away and will never come home. 
my uncles came home, as did Scott Levin's father and two uncles, as did, as did Mark Sabatino's father and four uncles and a brother who served in Vietnam as well, and Mark Mulliner's father and two uncles, and Don Storino's father as well. But my first cousin Stanley, 20 years old, did not come home. He was killed at Omaha Beach. And my aunt and uncle grieved for the rest of her, their long lives, often speaking of him as if he still lived, as if he was in the room down the hall. And 400,000 brave men and women did not come home. And too many more came back broken in mind and body. Most of the 16 million young men and women who served are no longer with us. But we must not forget the 700,000 Second World War veterans, like Mark's father, who are still with us, including honored members of our Elmhurst Legion, as well as the pride of our post, two frontline Army Medical Corps nurses. We must never forget what they did. We must never abandon them, for to do so is to abandon ourselves. Our own Bruce DeBeal spent a year as a 19-year-old Marine combat rifleman in Vietnam. <coughs> Every morning of that endless bloody year of war, he awoke and said, this could be the day I die. He came home but so many came home with early sour, sorrow, inconsolable and lasting, that drained the joy and sparkle of youth away. They have never been able to get over it. That is why it is simply not enough to say thank you for your service. The proper way to say thank you to veterans and active duty members of our military is to vote yes to the Elmhurst American Legion $30,000 grant. By voting yes, you are literally voting to save the life of a veteran most at risk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, um, any additional comments as it relates to the motion to amend? Alderman Brennan. Thank you, Mayor. It's certainly hard to uh, follow Alderman Leader, uh, but here we go. Uh, my father was a war veteran of World War II. Uh, had, I had numerous fond memories of he and I uh, spending some time in the American Legion in Kinderville, Indiana, post 86. And uh, like every person on the council, I have the utmost respect uh, for the men and women who serve our country and, and have sacrificed their lives. I'm in full support of the report as written by the committee uh, and will be voting yes. However, I am concerned whether an annual grant of this size year over year is sustainable. Um, I want post 187 to flourish and fulfill their mission. I'm convinced a solution exists. However, I, I do encourage the, the American Legion to engage a consultant to help validate and or revise strategies and plans with a focus on operational optimization and sustainability. I do think a, a solution exists out there. We have to get to that solution. Uh, lastly, you know, I, I need to hold myself accountable. There, there are a number of, you know, services and public events that, that I need to take advantage of as a resident of Elmhurst, and I encourage residents to do the same. That will certainly be a step in the right direction to help with some revenue cash flow. 
Thank you, Mayor. I do support the original uh, report as written. Okay, additional comments? Alderman uh, Deuter. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate Alderman Levin's kind of outline of the history and how we got to this point. <clears throat> and I appreciate Alderman Polumsky's overview of, of her thoughts. She's put a lot of thought um, into thinking about how to structure this um, and also the different ways that we as a city support our veterans and, and military. And I appreciate Alderman Leader's very personal comments. Um, I supported the grant that the city made to the Legion two years ago. My assumption at the time is that it was a one year, one time only. I, I think I, I didn't use the word shot in the arm, but that was my impression of how uh, that support was intended to be received. I didn't support the grant last year, and I came into this meeting um, planning to not support the report as it was presented. Uh, I think, you know, I, I've read the information uh, that the committee has reviewed, and it feels to me much more like this grant has become a charitable contribution. And I believe to the extent possible, taxpayers should make charitable, charitable contributions as they see fit, rather than have them directed by city council. That said, so my, my intention was to vote no, and I, and I will vote no on the majority report, but I appreciate the compromise that Alderman Polumsky has presented. Um, I think that is funding a set of services that, uh, you know, as she said in her minority report, are extremely beneficial to the community and something that I think the city's tax, do tax dollars, and the taxpayers' dollars, um, I think that's an appropriate use. So I will support the minority report. Any additional comments? Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as Alderman Brennan stated in the beginning of his comments, I want to state the same thing. My comments are nothing against the American Legion. My comments are nothing against veterans. Um, anybody who knows me, and even during our own parade, anytime I see anybody wearing a hat like Alderman Leader is wearing to my left, I go up to perfect strangers and thank them for their service. I wholeheartedly support all our veterans and all they have done and all they continue to do day and night to uh, ensure our freedom here. But with that said, um, the history is important on this. The history is important because the discussion at the dais was that the, the original $50,000 grant was a one-time grant. That's what was stated up here at the dais. Then it became a second year, mind you, for lesser dollar amount, and now it's back again. I have concerns, not because of the Legion, the Legion does a great job, but I have concerns in regards to just the operational costs, revenues versus expenses, and it doesn't look like the plan today, as well as a couple of years or three years ago, it's not sustainable the way that it's being run today. And this ain't a criticism against anybody at the Legion. I don't mean it to come off that way. But according to the information that was provided by the Legion, the, from a building revenue perspective and an overall program revenue perspective, almost every single year has been a loss. That's significant. Now, I can't make an assumption or a speculation if the Legion was counting on these dollars, the 30000 this year, 30000 last year, or the 50000 the previous year. I don't know if that was in their budget. I don't have the, their budget in front of me. But it is a concern that there hasn't really been any changes over the last three years to really cut back expenses and increase revenue. Even the dollars that I see in regards to advertising or recruitment, I forgot what it was mentioned in, in the um, spreadsheet, is very minimal. But since that time, the Legion has created new programs, and that's the ba they reinstated the baseball team, the Mud Dogs, and now Cool Cars Under the Stars. They're great programs. I don't disagree with them being good programs, but how can we continue to do and add to programs when we're losing money on a daily or yearly basis? That's a concern. It was suggested three years ago about maybe teaming up with other American Legions or Kiwanis or other organizations to support and maintain the building aspect. I don't know if any of those conversations have been had or where they went, if they were, 
but it hasn't materialized to date. So overall, the operational costs seem to be a, a concern and, con and seem to me to continue to grow. I agree with Alderman Polumsky in regards to doing some funding at this time. I think $10,000 does support some of the programs that the American Legion has stated in their application this year. I don't see a justification to do a full funding of $30,000 as it was, was instituted in our budget. I think the compromise is $10,000. I think it's a good one. Alderman Leader made some great points and his points were very emotional and tugs on your heartstrings and I agree with every single one of them. But the thing is, this isn't an argument, at least from my perspective, of does the American Legion do good work? They do. It's about what dollar amount is appropriate to sustain what programs. The programs that Alderman Leader mentioned are not the programs that these dollars are being requested for. It's not for the hotline, it's not for any of that. The critical programs that would help veterans today. Alderman Leader has seen me eat lunch at the American Legion on multiple occasions. I try to do my best as well to contribute. And I think the community as a whole, as Alderman Deuter has stated, needs to do that as well if we are gonna be able to sustain the American Legion here in Elmhurst with where they stay today, with the building and everything else. Veterans programs are definitely needed. We have seen many, many, way too many of wars in, in my lifetime. I don't wanna cut anything in regards to the programs that are going on at the American Legion today. But I am encouraging the American Legion and anybody who is willing to support to look at a different model to make sure that the operational costs at least become break even. The American Legion is a public benefit. Should we support the American Legion? Yes. The question is to what degree? So far, we, support, we supported the American Legion of $80,000 over the last two years. I think at least at this time, $10,000 is appropriate. Okay, any additional comments? Alderman Levin. Thank you. <clears throat> Just a few comments on what I've heard so far, and particularly on the proposal for the amendment. Um, part of the problem is that the present grant program that we have for the American Legion is not subject to the criteria of the community grant program. In fact, there are no criteria for the budgeted American Legion grant, which is part of the problem that we had as a committee in terms of the, the basis upon which we evaluated the request. Um, and so when I looked at the dollar amounts that are set forth in the report which staff provided and the Legion provided, um, I realized in my, in my opinion the, the specific line items weren't that important. I felt that the Legion was trying to justify struggling to identify specifically what our grant was going to be paying for. Um, and really what we're doing is we're, it's, I think it's easier to look at it as a grant to support the Legion in what it's doing without trying to figure out exactly how the particular dollars will be spent because they're spending it on a lot of different programs. I do think it was significant in our decision making that the military ball was already in process. There was this proposed reliance on the money coming in. Um, the reason I'll support it this year and not the minority report is I think we need to let the Legion know that it's not likely going to be there next year. I, not the council, but that's my opinion. Uh, the report recommends it go into the community grant program. I also think it's not our job to oversee the Legion's budget or to tell them how to make it work, which I'll hit on in a second. Um, it, we've done some good things for two years and we could do it again, um, but I think we have to consider uh, the fact that there are many charitable causes that are worthy of support. Uh, there are orphans, there are abused children, there are people who suffer from chronic disease, there are poor people who don't have enough to eat. And I could tell you a tale that would be equally compelling as to why the city should support it. But I will say that, although I'm not supporting your report, <laughs> your, your analysis is good public policy analysis. Um, the question is, what is a proper use of municipal dollars, dollars which our taxpayers 
are paying to the city for city services. And the question is, when the Legion is providing support for many veterans, most of whom, more than half, do not live in Elmhurst, and there are larger problems than what Elmhurst is able to take on, any more than any other charitable purpose. So my support this year is clear. Um, if the Legion can not find a way to sustain itself after a total of $110,000 in contribution over three years, I don't think there's a lot more that we would be able to do. I hope they'll use the extra $20,000 if the amendment doesn't pass and, and get a consultant to talk about the kind of planning that we do as a city. How do we look at you know, what our programs are and how do we get there and the changing nature of the veterans returning from modern military service versus the military of my father, the Vietnam War, the Korean War. It's different. Uh, the veterans who come back are they're less likely to join, so there, there's a need to do that kind of planning. Alderman um, Brennan talked about going with his father. Somehow I remember my dad taking me to the military or to the Purple Heart, and we had raw hamburger sandwiches with onion. I don't know how you eat a raw hamburger sandwich, but it was, you know, Saturday afternoon, that's, that's what you did. You went to the military organization, or the veterans organization. A lot of veterans aren't doing that. Again, it's not for us to tell the Legion how to do it. I feel that this last installment should help get them where they are, and then we will have done our part. They'll know that it's a different ball game, and it's not a guarantee. So I, I'm going to stick with the majority report. Thank you. Alderman Polomsky. One last point. I just wanted to address the piece about um, serving veterans with post-traumatic stress. I just want to uh, let the council know that we did confirm in our meeting that the Legion spends zero dollars on services for veterans with post-traumatic stress, and it is not um, budgeted for next year either. And I also want to confirm that the city continues to partner with Metropolitan Family Services. We allocate $30,000 um, every year, and that has in the last year allowed Metropolitan Family Services to serve over 600 Elmhurst residents there are certified, trained social workers uh, that are available 24 hours, and they are also available part-time in City Hall to assess need, provide services, or refer residents for more specialized care. These services include in-home mental health assessments, um, you know, provided by certified licensed social workers, referral for acute, immediate care, and ongoing services, including veterans-only resources, a caregiver support program, which is available for paid and unpaid caregivers. In-home senior respite, which matches trained respite worker volunteers to families to give caregivers a break. So I wanted everyone to know that we continue to fund that. Okay, any additional comments? All right, I'm going to ask Clerk Spencer to call the vote. This vote is on the motion to amend that is before us. Any questions? Uh, everyone clear on what the vote's on? All right, Clerk Spencer. I'll call the vote on the motion to amend. Milliner. No. Brennan. No. Sabatino. No. Deuter. Yes. Dunn. Absent. Leader. No. Polemski. Aye. Graham. Aye. Toledo. Absent. York. No. Levin? No. Park? Aye. Honquist? No. Kennedy? No. Four <coughs> ayes, eight nays, two absent. Four ayes, eight nays, motion fails. Uh, motion to amend fails. On to the original motion and the original report before us. Any additional comments? Lauren Mulliner. As one of the two people who put this forward, uh, I just want to make a couple of very quick and brief comments. Um, the American Legion is an organization that uh, is not necessarily looking for a handout. They're looking for help. They're looking for support from the city of Elmhurst. It's an organization that has been in Elmhurst since 1918, 1919. Um, and 
During that time, they've served large numbers of people, not just from the city of Elmhurst, but from other people throughout the DuPage County area. Uh, a few years back, quietly, the VFW club post closed and slipped out the door, slipped out the back door, and uh, we kind of lost track of where they went. They went into Bella Park, and if you look at their numbers over there from people who, from Elmhurst who go over there, there's very few. Um, I don't want that to happen to the, to the American Legion. I don't want to see us have an American Legion that decides that they're going to walk out of here. I'm here because of the fact that I have had people, my forefathers, who have fought for me to make sure that I have the right to sit up here and to help them make decisions, and I believe that the American Legion is here for that purpose, is to help those people who have come back to provide services, to provide access, to make sure that people know how to get that access. Um, it's all well and good to say that we've got the Metropolitan Services, but we've also got trained individuals who know how to deal specifically with people who have come back from wartime, and this American Legion knows how to get those people in contact with those other people. I've talked to numbers of veterans, not just from the city of Elmhurst, but from other places, who have talked to the American Legion here and have been able to get themselves access directly into the veterans' hospitals, which they were not able to do before. They would be sitting in waiting lines, and because of this, this American Legion, they have the ways to be able to get people move forward and get into those hospitals in a quick and timely fashion. That's what this Legion does. This Legion takes care of the people who made sure that we're able to sit here and we're able to make decisions and help this community move forward. And I would support $100,000 if we could do it, and I know we can't, but the reality is this American Legion needs to be here. We need to do what we can. We're here to uphold the United States Constitution, the Illinois Constitution, and our ordinances. That's what we're here for, and that's why I will support the 30000 without a question. Okay, any additional comments? Lord Spencer. Mulliner. Aye. Brennan. Aye. Sabatino. Aye. Deuter, so done. Absent. Leader. Aye. Golumski. No. Graham. No. Toledo. Absent. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. Park. No. Conquest. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Eight ayes, four nays, two absent. Eight ayes, four nays, motion carries. Agenda item 7.8 is approved. On to agenda item eight, reports and recommendations of appointed elected officials. 8.1, Mayor Morley, that's me. Three quick items of note. Um, I see Dave, Dave Oberg, I think, is still with us. Uh, I'm sure Dave is, uh, would like me to announce that uh, just a couple days ago, July 13th, uh, they opened up a new exhibit, Chicago Rink Rats, the golden age of the rollers, golden age of roller skating. Some of you may not even know that we used to have our very own uh, The Elm skate here in Elmhurst, over where Lexington is now. Um, used to visit it quite often when I was a kid. I'll leave it at that. Uh, proud to announce uh, the city has uh, introduced a water smart program. It's an web-based program. We had an open house here at City Hall um, on uh, July 9th. We will also have additional open houses on July 23rd, August 3rd, and August 27th. Um, you can get familiar with the City of Elmhurst Water Smart program on our website. It allows you to monitor your usage right down to the hour uh, to get a better handle on how you are using your water. Last but not least, our award-winning Neighborhood Roll Call Program continues to roll this summer. You can also get that information online of when we will be doing that. The next one is tomorrow, July 17th, at the corner of Armitage and Emroy, 6.30. See you there. Assistant City Manager Kopp, any announcements? No. No report. Any other reports from elected officials? Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, resolutions. 9.1. Don, do you need to speak before or after the motion? Um, I think after the motion. Yeah. Okay. To put this before council as, oh, I'm sorry, Clerk Spencer, please read the resolution. Okay. And a resolution approving and authorizing the execution of a joint and mutual settlement agreement, release of all claims. 
Uh, Patty, I have a much longer. The R77? Okay, you want me to read the title? That's fine, sure. the title. What she said was okay? The title would be better, Mayor. Okay. The full title. Okay. A resolution approving and authorizing the execution of a joint and mutual settlement agreement, release of all claims by and between Freddie Gonzalez, Arkin Construction Company, Inc., RJN Group, Inc., Raffi's Concrete, Inc., and the City of Elmhurst, Illinois, for the resolution of civil litigation. Okay, put this before council. I ask for a motion to approve the resolution as read. Motion by Alderman York, second by Alderman Mulliner. Discussion. Oh, before we, I ask for discussion. Uh, some legal. Yes, um, I am. Um, uh, a brief statement um, to the council. This uh, represents a settlement agreement of a, a, a personal injury claim that resulted by virtue of a city sewer project. Um, it occurred in April of 2014. Um, the lawsuit, as you heard in the title, was filed against Archon Construction, uh, RJN, um, City of Elmhurst, and Archon was the general contractor on the job, RJN was the site engineer, um, and there was also another subcontractor. The settlement uh, for a very sig significant injury is in the total amount of $250,000, of which uh, the City of Elmhurst participated in in that settlement up to $70,000. But I think that the important item to mention is that by virtue of our contract with the general contractor, Archon Construction, the city will not be having, the city will not be funding that $70,000. That will be paid pursuant to that contract by the general contractor, Archon Construction. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Additional comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll ask Clerk Spencer to call the vote. Milliner. Aye. Brennan. Aye. Sabatino. Aye. Goiter. Aye. Dunn. Absent. Leader. Aye. Kolumsky. Aye. Graham. Aye. Toledo. Absent. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. <clears throat> Park. Aye. Honquist. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. 12 ayes, 0 nays, 2 absent. 12 ayes, 0 nays, the motion carries. Agenda item 9.1 is approved. On to other business. Any other business? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Alderman Deuter, second by Alderman Kennedy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you. Aye.